Welcome, dear guest, to day one of Odd Tonic's 12 Days of Christmas Ghost Stories. For the Victorians, Christmas was the perfect time of year to gather around the warm fireplace and share chilling tales of ghostly visitations. Odd Tonic is carrying on this tradition with a ghost story for every day of the 12 days of Christmas. These stories make for great personal listening or to share with friends as an icebreaker to tell true, unexplained tales of your own. Our story tonight comes from Odd Tonic's new resident writer, A.D. Vaughn. We first became aware of A.D.'s talent for writing when she submitted a few listener stories for our Parlor Stories episodes. We are confident that you will hear more of her work on Odd Tonic in the coming year. So here is another true personal account from Ms. Vaughn. Settle in. Here we go. This isn't my story, but it's mine to tell. Sometimes a story is too fantastic or unreal to be believed. Sometimes the source of a story isn't one that can be easily trusted. As a natural skeptic, finding belief in the paranormal can take some convincing. This is the story of how I began to believe. I was a latchkey kid growing up. When I was in fifth grade, my mom paid our 15-year-old neighbor, Donna, to keep an eye on me after school. Donna was incredible, a massive Madonna fan with an incredible sense of style. Donna was always the brightest light in the room. In contrast to Donna was her friend Lisa. Lisa was a copycat friend. Anything Donna liked, Lisa suddenly started to obsess over it. When Donna went blonde, Lisa went blonde. Where Donna effortlessly commanded the attention of those around her, Lisa would do and say just about anything to get into the limelight. So when I came home from school and heard Lisa tell a fantastic tale about the party Donna should have gone to and how a Ouija board tried to kill them, I wasn't buying it. The story was very dramatic, with doors that wouldn't open, someone throwing a bowling ball, and a window that wouldn't break. But hearing all of this from Lisa just made it impossible to believe It was a little too convenient that all of this supposedly happened at the one party Donna didn't go to. So I shoved her story off into a little corner of my mind marked total BS. Fast forward four years. I'm a freshman in high school hanging out with friends at some boy's house. This guy was my friend Amy's boyfriend. I didn't like hanging out with him all that much, but I loved going to his house because he had a 20-year-old brother that I was crushing on in a very age-inappropriate way. His name was Jamie, and he looked like Val Kilmer in Real Genius. I was completely obsessed, but also incredibly shy, so I never made eye contact or spoke to him for fear of turning bright red. So there we were. Me, Amy, and a few other kids sitting on the floor trying to decide what we wanted to do for Halloween while Jamie sat on the couch smoking marble reds and melting my heart with his little half-smile. I don't remember who suggested it, but someone said, I have a Ouija board. We could use it on Halloween. And like a switch, Jamie's demeanor went from coy and cool to serious and protective older brother. No, don't ever use a Ouija board. The power of his voice was shocking enough, but what he said next left me completely numb. He told us his Ouija board story. It was the same story Lisa had told four years ago. When Jamie was a sophomore and Lisa a freshman, they were two of the 10 to 12 kids at a party in an old farmhouse their friend lived in. It wasn't some raging kegger like you see in the movies. It was just a group of friends drinking beer and talking trash like kids do. They had a fire going in the fireplace, and some of the couples were sitting in dark corners doing what teenagers do in dark corners. The kid that lived in the house brought out a Ouija board, and the teens decided to have a little impromptu seance. The seance started simply enough. A couple kids put their hands on the planchette and asked if there were any spirits listening. Soon, the planchette started to move. Are you moving it? No, you are, could be heard from the center of the circle. A conversation began with a spirit, and more kids started to pay attention to what was going on. It wasn't long before all the kids started asking random questions, and their questions got increasingly disrespectful. The spirit started to get annoyed. 
and the planchette started moving wildly around the board. Then the kitchen light flickered. The closet door began to rattle. They started to hear banging from all around them. The kids freaked out. They turned on the lights in the living room and the dining room. With the board abandoned in the middle of the floor, they thought it would be over, but the pounding and the flickering continued. Plates in the kitchen started to rattle in the cabinets, and the overhead light in the dining room started to swing like there was an earthquake, but the ground was still. Lisa and a couple other girls huddled together in the corner. People tried to get out of the house, but both the front door and the sliding glass door wouldn't open. Someone saw a bowling bag next to the front door, grabbed the ball out of it, and threw it at the sliding glass door. It bounced off. Eventually, someone picked up the Ouija board and threw it into the fireplace. As the board burned, the house calmed down. The banging stopped. The front door popped open and the sliding glass door shattered. When Jamie finished telling his story, my friends didn't believe him. How could they? It sounded impossible. And it's not like Jamie wasn't above telling tall tales to mess with his brother. But I looked right into Jamie's piercing blue eyes and I said, Lisa was at that party. You know Lisa? She was my babysitter's best friend. Donna? Yeah. Donna was cool. Yeah. If I had only ever heard that story from Lisa or Jamie, I never would have believed it could be true. But hearing the same story from two people four years apart makes me think it had to have really happened. Since then, I've used Ouija boards a few times with a varying degrees of success. But I've always remembered that story and how things took a terrifying turn when people stopped being respectful to the spirit they had contacted. <laughs> Very creepy. <laughs> and well told, my love. Mm. We hope you've enjoyed tonight's ghost story. Join us tomorrow for another thrilling tale on day two of Odd Tonic's 12 Days of Christmas Ghost Stories. Be sure to subscribe to Odd Tonic on your favorite podcast app or YouTube for future episodes of Weird History, Strange Science, and the Paranormal. Good night.